The season has come to an end for club football and the players are now back to their various countries. Of course, back to national assignment as the FIFA window opens for the World Cup qualifiers. For the Super Eagles of Nigeria, the much-awaited clash against the Bafana Bafana of South Africa at the magnificent Gosville Akpabio Stadium in Uyu uh, will be coming up this Friday. And of course, we'll be giving you bit by bit details on the preparation for that game as the Super Eagles get set to see how they can clinch maximum points. With me here is somebody who has been following football for a long time and of course, uh, and has been following the Super Eagles all the way. I'm talking about uh, Chuka Izwegbuna. Chuka, you are very much welcome to Hotspot Super Eagles Watch podcast. Um, for my, thank you for having me on the program. I'm excited to talk about talk football, and I'm also excited to talk Super Eagles. Um, we, we are counting down to that big match between Nigeria and South Africa. Uh, Uyo, the Gospel at Pablo Stadium, the nest of champion, is, uh, is, is as if it's now the ordained home of the Super Eagles when it comes to playing uh, international matches. Yeah, first of all, um, it should have been the place where the Super Eagles will play all their matches because um, the pitch is the FIFA designated that pitch as the best in Nigeria. And then uh, the Super Eagles players, most of them play in Europe, they're used to playing on fantastic pitches. So coming to Nigeria, yeah, it just makes common sense to put them on the best pitch if you want to get the best results. So it's a no-brainer that they are playing at their God's Will Aquabio Stadium. Of course, joining us live all the way from Uyo is the new media officer of the Super Eagles, Promise Efoge. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Uh, Promise, let me start by saying congratulations on your new appointment as the Super Eagles media officer. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Ifoma. Thank you for uh, congratulating me. Um, it's a new feeling. It's a different feeling. You know, um, I've always covered the Super Eagles as a journalist. Uh, uh, for the past 22 years of my life, you know, um, covering the team from the outside is different from covering the team from the inside. You know, covering the team and having someone as an intermediary or, or as an interface is different from being the interface yourself. And so it's a, it's a different feeling. And I want to say thank you to the Nigeria Football Federation for finding me worthy uh, to mount the saddle. And what's the situation in camp? Are all the 23 players now in camp? All right, the team is in Uyo, and uh, um, as we speak, it's still the 15 players I reported earlier that are still in camp. No thanks to the ongoing Nigeria Labour Congress uh, uh, strike that has, uh, has stalled um, domestic flights. Uh, 15 players in camp, eight players stranded at different locations. Uh, they haven't been able to find their way to Uyo because uh, they can't fly in into Uyo. And of course, we know the distance from Abuja or Lagos to Uyo is quite uh, um, um, a huge one. But um, the Nigeria Football Federation is doing everything possible to get these players in camp as soon as possible because the coach needs every player in camp preparation to uh, these two important games. First, against South Africa, which is just a few days away. He needs everybody in camp to be able to uh, come up with his, with his strategies, come up with his game plan, come up with uh, uh, and uh, also be able to, to, to get these players understand his training methodologies. You know, he needs everybody in camp and the Federation is doing everything to ensure that he, he, he gets uh, what he wants. What's the mindset of the team as they prepare for Friday's encounter against the Bafana Bafana of South Africa? And few days later against Benin Republic uh, in Abidjan. The mindset is positive, very positive. Remember, the Super Eagles defeated the Bafana Bafana uh, via penalties at the Africa Cup of Nations uh, just a few months ago in uh, Cote d'Ivoire. I mean, if you can do it once, you can always do it again. I remember um, um, at the AFCON, the slogan was, uh, let's do it again. But they couldn't do it again. Uh, they got to the finals. It was quite disappointing, but then Nigerians hailed the efforts. Nigerians hailed the ethnicity. Um, no one gave the Super Eagles a chance at the start of the Nations Cup uh, to have, you know, gone as far as they did. Uh, and so um, expectations are higher now. 
Uh, remember, we failed to qualify for the World Cup uh, 2022, the first World Cup in the Middle East. Um, the, the, the Eagles are still viewing that miss and uh, they do not want uh, Thunder to strike twice in one place. And so uh, not qualifying for two World Cups back to back will be a travesty. The players know what it means to, I mean, to play at the World Cup. Many of them have not played at the World Cup. They want to taste that action because the World Cup is the opium as far as professional football is concerned. They have been tutored by a coach who's played at the World Cup or has played at two World Cups uh, 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 or three World Cups, if 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 I can remember correctly, 1994, 1998, and uh, okay, 2002, he wasn't at the World Cup because he was out of the team at that time. But you see, they have been tutored by a man who's played at the World Cup, who's played the Champions League, who's played football at the highest level. They are inspired by his presence, you know. And so that alone on its own goes a long way to push these boys to want to get to the zenith. And so I I, I know South Africa will fall on Friday uh, with the mindset of the players, uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, the positivity in them. Um, um, AFCON finalists, you know, they feel they can do anything. They feel they have it. They have the 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 the, the propensity uh, to get all the three points against South Africa at home. It's a home game, and they, they expect the fans to be behind them. The Gosling Lapabio Stadium should be filled to, to capacity on Friday evening, and that will go a long way to push the boys to get all the three points. When that three point against South Africa is secured, then they begin to look at the game against Benin Republic um, um, a few days later. Are the players adjusting to the reality of working with a new coach? Well, um, this is a man they've worked with um, in the last 18 months. Uh, coach Finidi is not new to the system. He was assistant coach for 18 months under Jose Becerro. So the players know him. Uh, he's no stranger to them. Uh, he's been coaching them, though, uh, at uh, the assistant level. You know, So um, they know him. He knows them. The, the 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 familiarity is there. They understand his language. They understand what he wants. Um, certainly, he's the head coach now. Uh, the coaching style, the coaching methodology may be different uh, from uh, when he was uh, an assistant to Jose Becerro. But it's the same man. It's the same Finidi George that they have been with in the past 18 months. And so that familiarity is there. And uh, uh, what Finidi is doing right now is trying to make the players uh, play uh, the way he wants them to play. He said over time, he said to all who cares to listen, that these players uh, would play the way he wants them to play. And uh, 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 all we can hope for is the best in terms of the result, because the result is the most important thing. Sometimes uh, fans would, would, would care less about how you play. They want to get the result. They want to see the results. And they're knowing fully well that this time the Super Eagles are not in a very good position um, on the table, as far as the World Cup qualifier is concerned, uh, they are third on the table, two points from two games, two draws, uh, two points behind leaders uh, Rwanda, South Africa in second with three points. And so the Eagles know that they must endeavour uh, to catch up and overtake, and they can only do so if they get to win these games um, against South Africa and the Republic. From what you observed from the last two trainings of the, of the Super Eagles, how would you describe the players' relationship with the new coach, Finidi George? Fantastic relationship. Um, he's one man that they respect a lot. Uh, most of these players um, uh, watch Finidi as, as kids, you know. So he's one man they adore. He's one, he's one man they respect. Um, he's one man that they also understand. Uh, as I said earlier, they've worked with him previously. So... Um, um, there is that that level of uh, of cohesion, you know, um, amongst the players and with the coach, and so it's almost like a, a continuum, you know, from what it was during the days of uh, Jose Pacero to what we have now. The only difference here is that Finidi is no longer the assistant coach; he is now the head coach, uh, and uh, really breathing down on those players how he wants them to play, uh, which will surely be different from what we saw um, in the previous uh, 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 regime. How do you see our chances in these two crucial World Cup qualifiers? Very bright. Very, very bright. I mean, our players are all doing well in diaspora. Our players are all doing well in Europe. Um, Victor Boniface was a key player for Bayer Leverkusen uh, that won the German Bundesliga. We saw um, um, Ademola Lukman scored a, a hat-trick uh, for Atalanta um, in the Europa uh, Cup final. I mean, our players 
have done extremely well in the outgone season in Europe. Coming back with that confidence, coming back uh, with that form, uh, uh, it, it is expected that South Africa will fall, and not just fall, in the local parlance, they will fall Yakata. Thank you so much, Promise Efoga. We expect more updates from the Super Eagles camp in the days ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, of course, still with me uh, in the studio is Chuka. Chuka, these are two crucial games the Super Eagles must win. And it seems to be an Ecolian task uh, for Finidi George because uh, it will be weighed on the scale of performance of these two crucial games because uh, we need to get to the World Cup in 2026. Um, uh, uh, first of all, I would say that um, I think his appointment came um, way too late, too close to this game. Um, it's not afforded him enough time, especially going by the importance of the game. Everybody knows that it's very important. We've not started well in the World Cup qualifiers. We need to beat South Africa and we need to beat Benin Republic to put ourselves on, on strong footing to make it out of that group. And uh, from what we saw in the last AFCON, um, South Africa are no pushovers. They give us a big run for our money and we, they made us sweat. And, uh, we don't expect anything, anything different. To say the least, um, South Africa, Bafana Bafana have closed the gap between the Super Eagles and them. Before it was something we want to play, we would say, ah, it's South Africa will beat them. But now it's no longer the case. Despite the fact that they have uh, the bulk of their team are home based players, but uh, they, they play well. They understand the rudiments of the game. And they make, they, like I said in the last AFCON, they made our players sweat. And we should not expect anything less. The conditions to play will be good because um, the pitch is fantastic. The only thing Nigeria has against uh, for going for them is that we'll have the home support there that should galvanize the players to play well. But we are still looking to see what Finidi's philosophy is. And this is not the kind of game where we should be finding out what uh, Finidi George's uh, philosoph uh, philosophy is. This is the kind of game where we should know what he wants to do, what his philosophy is, what to expect from the players. But now we will be watching the game, looking to see what he has for the Super Eagles, rather than what the Super Eagles will deliver. But uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, notwithstanding, every Super Eagles fan wants, expects that the Super Eagles must beat Bafana Bafana in New York. Having failed to qualify for the last uh, World Cup in Qatar, uh, to many close watchers of the game, uh, from the Nigerian standpoint, this is not a time for, for looking for excuses. We need to get the job done. There are no, there's no room for excuses. But we've already created an environment for excuses. Because um, Finidi George will be, no matter how you describe it, will be experimenting. Uh, Gen where General Raw has, uh, I said General Raw. Jose um, uh, Pacero. Jose Pacero has gone. He had a style that Nigerians didn't like. They felt it was ultra defensive. So it means that Finidi George is coming with a new style, an attacking style. How well are these players that he has invited suited to his formation? These are the questions that will be asked. These are the questions that Nigerians will be looking to find answers. We want to play attractive football, we want to play attacking football, but we want a result-oriented football. Because no matter how well the Super Eagles play, if they don't beat South Africa, we'll put ourselves in, deeper, in a deeper mess and might not qualify for the next World Cup. Finide will definitely be on the hot seat. Uh, do you think this will be so much pressure for him? taking the team through these two crucial qualifying games? Um, for me, the first thing I'll tell Finidi George is that uh, whatever happens, you're used to pressure. You've been under pressure as a player and as a coach. So whatever happens, it's not a situation that we've not seen before. And the worst that can happen is that the Super Eagles don't qualify. So he should be confident. He should take the... Uh, he should be... Uh, how do I put it? He should take risks. He should take risks to get this result, but he should be calculative. The, the Nigeria has the players. We have fantastic players. Of course, we'll be missing some of our best players like Victor Simen, who is absent. But we have Victor Boniface. He's just fresh off win a fantastic season in Germany. We also have some other uh, fantastic players who are in the team who have done well this season, like Ademola Lukman. So, uh, uh, Finidi George really has no excuse 
about winning uh, a beat in South Africa. And that's the minimum that Nigerians expect from him. Um, of course, uh, up front, as you have said, in the attacking line, uh, there will be no Victor Osime and uh, a few others who have, uh, uh, are not in the team for now. Uh, how, how much will this affect the performance or sharpness of the team up front? Um, I don't think it should affect it much because under um, Jose Pesero, he tried to play Victor Osime and Boniface together. It didn't work. Victor Osime showed that he's a one man, like we say in Nigeria, he's a one man Mopo. He likes to operate alone with support from the wings. Now, this is an opportunity for uh, Boniface to show that he can operate in the absence of um, Osime. And we have, we have Lukman, we have all the um, we have all the other top players in, in the team um, and they should be able to deliver. We have the strikers up front. The attack is still vibrant. There's Terrence Murphy there. He's been, he had a fantastic season in uh, France. He was the eighth top scorer in France this season. So he should be able to, if Boniface is not shining, he should be able to also fill in the space. And then we have a plethora of midfielders who should be able to deliver. He has tried it will be playing in a more attacking formation unlike uh, during the friendlies, unlike what we saw uh, at the Nations Cup where he played a bit more deep and played box to box and it really sapped him of uh, plenty of energy. But now he has, he has the liberty to create and that's um, something that the attackers there should enjoy. He should get the best out of, out of Iwobi. Um, at, the, at the end of the day, what are you expecting from, from this team? Is it going to be a rekindling of hope? after we have lost out from the last World Cup, uh, probably this time, finding our balance to be at the World Cup into, in 2026? Um, if you call it the rekindling of hope, I won't argue too much with that. But where I'm particularly worried about is our, our defence. And then the player's mentality into reacting to going down. At the Nations Cup, most of the times we, we, we scored first, in most of the games we scored first. And then we are only able to react well when we considered uh, first once, and that was against Equatorial Guinea. And the others, we, we scored first. Against Cote d'Ivoire, once they took the lead, we weren't able to react. And it worries me, because during the friendlies, against Mali, when we considered the players were not, uh, in fact, the way we considered those goals were a big worry for me. And we're not able to react. So I won't too much say, I won't argue with rekindling of hope, and I won't say too much of rekindling of hope. But I think that, we, as usual, we always have a good attack. But that defense is a big worry for me. And if, if that's something that Infinity Judge can fix, keep the team from conceding cheap goals, unnecessary goals, the Super Eagles will definitely qualify from the group. But those things, the, uh, the defense and then scoring regularly. We've had problem with when teams sit back. Again, in the last game uh, against South Africa in the, in the Nations Cup, they sat back, we found it difficult to score. When teams sit back against us, we struggle to score. And we should be able to unlock, we find a way to unlock defenses. I'm, only, I'm happy that uh, Finiti George wants to play some of these players further up front, like you, uh, you will be playing them further in attack, you know, he has guile. He should be able to unlock the fences instead of relying most of the time on the wings. So with that, I think we should be able to get the goals against South Africa. But keeping a clean sheet is a big worry for me. So the, the, the main issue now is that we should not allow the opponent to score first. They shouldn't score against us. <laughs> <laughs> we must keep a clean sheet. That, that would be dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. Because the Super Eagles have not shown that they can react. They have not shown the mentality like uh, teams like Real Madrid have shown that when they go down, it's not over until it's over. There was a time the Super Eagles had that. We keep fighting. We, we die on that pitch. It's not over until it's over. But these Super Eagles now, once they score against them, you are like in two, in two minds. Ah, will these players, will they respond? Will they respond? And maybe it's because of the way uh, Pesero has set up the team during the Nations Cup. So uh, Finidi George is trying to pull them out of that mentality, remove that clog from their head to those days, uh, 94 uh, days where we attack through the wings, we attack through the, through the middle, 
Then when you had JJ, you had Olise, you had Amonike on the wings, you had Philide himself on the wings, and they were creating chances from almost everywhere on the pitch. That is what I'm sure that Philide will want to reenact uh, with the Super Eagles now. And finally, at the end of the day, you, you hope to see this team uh, at the World Cup in 2026? Without a doubt. We must be at the World Cup. We can't go, we can't go two, eight years without being at the World Cup. It's disastrous for uh, our football, national team football. And for once, at least, let's emulate uh, the, the female team, the Super Falcons. Let us also be there and then show the world that, yes, the Super Eagles is a, a formidable force. Thank you so much, Chuka, for being on a Super Eagles uh, Hotspots uh, podcast uh, for this uh, special episode of Countdown to the Big Match. Uh, World Cup qualifying games, first against South Africa and later against Republic of Benin. Thank you for having me on the podcast and I'm always available. You are free to watch our videos and of course follow us on our social media platforms. That has been Hotspot's Super Eagles Watch podcast uh, for this edition. We'll join you in subsequent editions.